I remember one story. The David Spade. You remember the David Spade story? Uh, like the some we were maybe we were was it we were at Koi? We were somewhere and and uh, there's oh Spade wanted to send uh, send over some bad sushi. And you're like, it looks like he's somebody already sent him. Looks like he sent some to himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, oh my goodness, you know. Yeah, but but I mean, Spade is is one of those guys who, uh, early on was making a living taking shots at people, right. and a really, you know, he was he, you know, on SNL and whatnot, and so he and his crew are. That's what, that's they, what do. they do. That's what right. they do. They they roast right. each other. Right. So that was. The irony is, you know me, I'm not even that guy. Right. I don't ever do, you know, so I, so, and, and, you know, it's funny because I just took shots at Vince because I, but. <laughs> um, Aside from the Vince stuff. Right, right. You know, but as we get older, you really, I mean, it's one of the great gifts that you have to learn, which is just like, everyone's doing the best they can. Right. You know what I mean? They're going to take shots of you. Just don't even let it get to you. I, I would always feel like people would step, almost go out of their way to take a shot of you. It would not like, oh, you I, happen to be in my lane and I'm going to take a shot of you because I'm looking at you. At times it would feel like, wow, that person went out of their way to you take know, that shot. Uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm glad you said that because again, you- We talked about it when it was like, it was pretty early on. I was like- what is it, man? What's going on? I'll give you the perfect example so we don't have to talk about this too much so right. everyone at home can go, what the fuck are they They're talking, talking about? about? So here, here it is. As a cast, we're at the Aspen Comedy Festival. We're doing a Q&A. We go out to dinner afterwards and, you know, there isn't a reservation for us. We have the entire cast of Entourage, as we're peaking as a show, walk in together to a restaurant and we there's no reservation, okay? So we all walk into the bar. Imagine like the the cast of wh whatever walking in together. At that you know moment, what I mean? it was a it was a big thing. Of, yeah, like the entire entourage together eating yeah. dinner. So it was it, yeah. it was uh you know it was I think people were just awkward. Like right. what the fuck is going on? And we, we were there. No we something. were there for like an hour and a half or something. Something right. it was like it was it was weird. So we find we we got seated and had our dinner and we were you know hbo was looking after us and all that kind of stuff it's great time. the story and i'm not making up this up this the story this is what the story ha as it was reported that made it everywhere i came in late with a large group of people about 14 people demanded a table got the table refused to pay and threw dvds of entourage at the entire wait staff that you tried to pay with dvds and um yeah, you, you came in late without a reservation, and I, they might have even thrown a, do you know who I am, which, <laughs> you know, you said, do you know who I am, and then when the bill came, you tried to pay with entourage DVDs, which is really, if you wanted to look into that, it's ridiculous. Why would, why would you have a... Uh, Extra entourage DVDs. On now, the, <laughs> now, I, in, in all fairness, it, they were DVDs of my reel that I was throwing at people. <laughs> You're no, acting real. no, I mean, th think, think about this. So, I'm so glad you get to I remember. Yeah. So you get to see firsthand what happens. Yeah. Versus like what the spin is. Now, oh, yeah. I, here, here's my theory, and I could be wrong about it, but I think we all know Ari Golds, and they exist. And you know, one of them is Ari Emanuel, obviously right. that that the character is not loosely, but very specifically <laughs> right, exactly. based on. Um, and there is a perception about Hollywood players, right? And uh, people in positions of power, and um, you know, there are a lot of them out there, and we know what it's like to be around them. And suddenly, um, because these people don't know me. They know the character, and so it's- They it, want you to be that character. They want you to jump into character when you see them, right? It's, oh, it's, oh, oh, for sure. Like and roast the, me, right? Oh, kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, call my wife a rusty <laughs> cunt bucket. <laughs> Brother, we're in front of a Cinnabon. Yeah. I can't. can't um, yeah, that, that happens all the time, but to, our, to the point of what we were talking about, I think that it's- a character like that is a very easy target. Right. You, you, it's, you know what I mean? You could take shots at him because he's the rich, white, powerful douchebag. Right. You know what I mean? So that, that I was, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared 
to be vilified right. because there I am. I'm, you know, I'm not a kid. I'm right. 37 years old and I've been under the radar my entire life, made a bunch of movies, but just working, doing my thing, having fun. And then suddenly the moment I become famous, the knives come out and I was like, Wow, that was fast. <laughs> it did. Seem, I didn't have like eleven yeah. seconds to to enjoy it's enjoy it before they 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 dialed up the heat pretty it, quick. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and by the way, I'm not playing the victim. I'm just observing. And the good news about this entire journey is, it used to really hurt me. Right. You know what I mean? Because to be misunderstood is not fun on a global level. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but then you kind of then you have to grow up. Right. Or go crazy right, right. <laughs> and and growing up and evolving is more fun